Hi, friends. I was Terry Carroll. I was talking to fans people. And I want to talk about this. Jake Davenport says, Eric, what do you think about ISTJ and ENFP? Based on the people I know, it seems like a good match. I said, yeah, they're duels, and I believe work well. I'll make a video. And then that was two weeks ago. 26 minutes ago, he said, hope you didn't forget to make this video. I did. I forget to make this video. Thanks for the reminder. I'll make it right now. If you, if I've told you I'll make you a video, and you remind me, I'll make you a video. And if I don't, if you remind me again, I will make you a video. I will never get offended at you reminding me over and over again of something I've committed to do. So, I will do it. Uh, I will forget, probably, the first time I tell you if I don't do it right then. So, here's what I have to think about. Here's what I have to say about that ENFP ISTJ relationship. It's a duality relationship. It's in a different quadrant than mine. And duality relationships and other quadras, I think, play out. I, mean, I think each dual pair plays out in its own unique way. And uh, that the relationship, com that if you compare dual pairs against each other, like. Uh, alpha, call Alpha 1 uh, ENTP ISFJ and Alpha 2 ESFJ INTP you don't have to pick those ones but you know let's call it that for the sake of calling it that each that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 the eight, pool, eight ones will um, ones will be similar to each other very similar to each other in, in terms of how the relationship plays out so that ENTP ISFJ couples everywhere are going to experience spookily similar things. Not everything. Hello. I'm currently making a video about ISTJ ENFP relationships. And so I think e ISTJ and ENFP duality will play out consistent, consistently across uh, examples of that relationship. But it won't play out like other dual relationships necessarily. And the reason is what I'm going to articulate right now. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I don't know if she can hear me or not. Mic check. I can hear me. Okay. So, uh, ISTJ ENFPs. Their duality relationship is built first and foremost on the NESI deal, the same kind of deal that ISFJ and ENFP get. ENFP has a natural ideational nature. They like chatting, coming up with ideas, um, exploring possibilities. ISTJ has a naturally self-knowing behavior, which is they understand where they are right now in the day and uh, what's going on, like how they feel, they're aware of their body. They can be hypochondriacs, ISTJs. ISFJs not so much, but ISTJs can be hypochondriacs. Uh, and they're very concerned about their physical state of being in relation to things around them in the sensory environment. They're very sensory sensors. ISTJs are very sensory. ISFJs are quite intuitive versions of sensors. And the big difference is uh, ISFJs have three abstract or metaphysical functions and one uh, concrete or physical. ISFJs start with SI, which is the physical epistemology, the subjective epistemology. And so do ISTJs. And then ISTJs have the physical subjective logic that is uh, TE and the physical subjective um, valuing that's FI and it's not until the last function that ISTJ has a metaphysical function expert intuition they like to ideate despite the fact that they're so from one two three slots locked into the physical world my friend Cameron's an ISTJ. 
my neighbor and friend Chris is an ISTJ. I get along well with ISTJs, as does anybody who has my relationship to FE is going to get it, probably get along fine with them. The thing about the where FE is in your stack is going to be hugely important in how you perceive ISTJ. So if you have second slot or first slot FE, you cannot date an ISTJ. You will not succeed at all because their FE failures will bother you too much. In contrast, while I value FE a lot in the third slot, um, I value it for me and I don't, it's depending on how the kind of awkward somebody is, I'm not gonna necessarily internalize that. You know, Kimberly sometimes makes social mistakes, it doesn't really bother me. Um, I make social mistakes, it bothers her. Anyhow, ISTJ is a very sensory and physically grounded individual. They have good posture. They're still, in general, when they're not doing something. They've got a clear sense of how to execute protocols and steps in a process to attain outcomes. When Cameron came over not that long ago and he was feeling sad, I was feeling sad too. I was I, when I made the the date with him. I was feeling sad. I needed a friend to talk to. You know, I was upset about Kimberly, and uh, we were in a, the biggest fight of our relationship. By the time we actually did hang out, our fight was over. Me and Kimberly. But what I learned was that he uh, was having on the outs with his girlfriend, who is an ESFP. Now, in it, when I hear him talking about that relationship, what he says, he talks about the night of lightning where. They used to go out, and then they started going out again after a decent time off of going out. And they met, they went out, then they went to Cameron's van. There was a storm that night, there was lightning going on. They got real FI on shit, and it was spectacular. And it was great for about a month. And then they're like chasing that high. That's what he describes it as. And, you know, she's completely unreasonably, irrationally controlling about certain things that she has strong feelings about, even though there's no reason to prioritize that. For example, she gets upset about him smoking weed. You know. And he's starting to internalize some stuff. You know, what she says to him is, you talk about dumb stuff. I, you, it just makes you dumb. I don't like it. What she's really saying there is, any is my insecurity function. When you're high, you start to extrovertedly intuit, and it makes me uncomfortable. So, uh,. But he started to internalize it, like, yeah, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe I talk about stupid shit like this. And I'm like, Cameron, I don't think this stuff you're talking about right now is stupid. He, oh, I know what he was saying. The example he came up with, we drove by the Army Supply Surplus Store, that's kind of over there, and he said he wants a, a, a suit, like a, a suit, business suit kind of thing. <laughs> but made out of I forget what it's called now that's that weird like shaggy strips of clothy thing that snipers wear when they're on top of a building I can't remember what it's called anyway um, and he made jokes he made a joke about that and then you know we kind of riffed on that and and saying how it would be cool to just have the shoes and 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 like a, a hat and maybe the gloves or something and the rest would be a regular suit but anyway then he's like see that's the sort of dumb shit that Kara doesn't like and I'm like 
that's not dumb. That's funny. It's it's fun. You're having fun. You're enjoying yourself. You're being yourself. You don't need to be punished for that. So it shows you what can happen when you get in the wrong relationship. It's a lot of precursor to ENFP, ISTJ, huh? Well, ENFP, ISTJ is going to be a relationship that I suspect grows ever deeply and more substantially bound uh, and bound to each other because you're talking about a tool function and an auxiliary function of FI. ENFP's main way of approaching everything, which is from a feelings perspective, recognizing personal interests are significant, uh, knowing what one wants, knowing why one values this outcome or that outcome or something else, and feeling for your own self a sense of love of somebody else or greed about them, desire to possess them. That's the hidden agenda of the ISTJ. It's his third slot function, which means he... He's going to be doing TE, but checking with FI all the time to make sure that he, he's doing TE on the right job site. It just says ENTP, I do TI all the time, but I have to I check back with FE to make sure that it's presenting well. Uh, they do the same thing with FI. They do TE, they check back with FI to make sure they're TE in the right shit. Now, in contrast, ENFP, they. Uh, are going to tool function stuff. They're going to FI it as a default. They're going to approach dealing with things in terms of relating to their personal interest, what they value subjectively, what they hold precious or dear, um, and what matters that's unique to them, regardless of the rules or whatever else. But in order to accomplish that, they need to operate within the rules of physics or metaphysics or whatever and there in lies their TE hidden agenda it says okay well great you're going to be all personal interest what I like what I don't like what's important to me why it's important to me uh, what what is significant purely to interested parties regardless of the rules that's great but if you want to get that, you're going to have to have some sort of interaction with the logic. So I, I'm here to, to you, you keep doing that FI, 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 to check back here with me, TE, to make sure that the FI is consistent with what, what you want is consistent with uh, realistic possibilities of getting it. In other words, that if you want me to build you a castle out of tiny pebbles with this bottle of Elmer's glue that's you know, the size of a real castle, then that's not very feasible. But that's why you have to have a relationship with TE when you're an FI tool user, is because wanting and being able to get are related closely. Okay, uh, so on the front end of the stack, the conscious stack is the same union. Uh, the union MBTI approach uh, there's a compatibility in functions that necessarily means they're going to find their regular normal conscious interactions of positive stuff very smooth and effective so how does that actually play out though give me give me some examples Eric of of stuff playing out one way or the other well ISTJ will say Hey, look, we need to do go do this, put that over there, then blah blah blah, and start sort of stepping out what we're gonna do, or we'll just start saying, okay, well here's the first thing. Let's assess the situation and do the TE thing, right? Then ENFP will value that. They will remind the ISTJ of what's important. They might say, uh, but honey, I, I really want that in blue. 
and this is not this is dark blue and then the ICJ will go well but the blue one we have is is not the right size and she'll say well but I really value it in blue and the ICJ will go okay well let me cut the other one then oh that's fine no problem I got you baby and then do the TE stuff I actually kind of now I'm sitting here I'm realizing I understand this relationship because this is the back end of my stack with Kimberly in the middle too you know it's uh, I have this relationship with Kimberly where she provides the FI to remind me what is what we're really trying to accomplish here um, and then I provide the TE of making it like Kimberly wants the difference is for us, it's a way of expressing our N-E-S-I-F-E -E components. Whereas, and a way of addressing our our back end stuff. And that's the other half of what duality does, is it addresses the back end stuff. So let's look at how that works out for ENFP and ICJ on the back end. The back end meaning five, six, seven, eight. As I prefer those numbers rather than any sort of socionics blocks approach which is the only thing I like to, about the socionics block I will refer to the one twos as the ego block because that's convenient because they do function as a block one two functions as a block for sure but that doesn't mean it, it functions as a, as a team with a sub right so it's like a, a sub coach Mostly it's TI and NE in the mix. Occasionally you'll get NE and FE in the mix. And FE keeps checking to make sure the NE TI is doing the right thing. Well, the, uh, the one, two, but, but I don't like the blocks other than that. I don't talk about blocks because if I were going to talk about blocks, I'd talk about one, two being a block. And I talk about one four being a block, and two two three is not really a block. One 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 two is a block. One four is a block, and I guess five eight is a block too. It's, it, I don't even want to get into what I'm thinking right about right now. This is just an idea I just have having right now about how they, what it means to be a block and what it means to function together versus being an ancillary. But I don't want to. I haven't even thought of that. I just have the idea right now. So I'm not gonna get into it. All right. So uh, let's look at the back end. ENFP goes ignoring NI and insecure SE, just like ENTP. And in the middle they go counter value TI polar uh, when counter valued FE polar TI ISTJ goes ignoring SE insecure NI and they go counter valued TI polar FE. If there's going to be conflicts between the ENFP and ISTJ, it'll be over NI things. And the reason for this is because ENFP is an action person and ISTJ is an epistemology person. So you want to act from knowledge. You want to adjudicate from data or experience so when you take in experience when things happen to you you make meaning about it one way or the other you make a determination about its legitimacy and or and then you may well you make a determination about its legitimacy if you had a lot of extra intuition you may make a lot more meaning about it than that 
if you got extroverted sensing, you might make take action on that. Uh, one way or the other, action comes from knowledge. Knowledge happens after you made decisions. So once I've decided what I'm doing at this point, I know I'm going to go pick up this queen size bed from Colin's house, uh, and or it's a futon actually, but around approximately a queen size futon. <coughs> I know because I've decided it. We decided it earlier today. Kimberly decided it before. She informed me, and I now know it. It's not something to be determined. I know I'm going to go do that, and I know we're going to do it pretty soon. It's knowledge now. So, knowing leads to action. This is why knowledge and action are paired together. The kind of knowing infers the kind of action. So with an extrovert and intuitor, the kind of knowing is personal. I know what's happened, so I can make new possibilities about what might come up next, whatever. It's natural for me to conceive of ways in which things might be interpreted, perceived, whatever because I understand knowledge as subjective. It's from what I've learned, what I've experienced. My, I can extrapolate out from uh, small patterns close to me to draw large general rules that may or may not actually generalize, depends on the circumstance, but it's the sort of thing that the SINE user does. The, in contrast, the epistemology of an NI user is objective it's about the way the world is so you're not you're inherently not designed as an ni user to come up with possibilities about how it might be other than how it is because instead of i know what i know from what i've learned and experienced it's i know about the world because i can see how it is uh what i know from my experience i can guess new possibilities about things that might happen in the future and ways things might be different and other reasons why things might happen. I don't know, because I don't know how the world is. I really just know what happened to me. I'm trying to build a model from a bunch of random experiences and examples. So I have to be able to make possibilities. And I users, they know because that's they're seeing what how it is. So it goes against the possibility that it'd be otherwise. As a consequence, when you know how things are, then what you need to do is to manifest your decisions into causal reality. Make them happen. For reallys, though. Like, okay, I made a decision a long time ago to make this video for Homie, and I didn't follow through on it. That's because I've got bad SC. I got bad SE because my SI component, which helps me to remember things like saying I was going to make this video, um, is deprioritized at the fourth slot, and my dominant nature is expert in intuition. So because I'm spending so much more of my time acting metaphysically on new stuff right now, I tend to forget what I promised to do a little while ago. and. So, the point of all of that explanation about intuition and action is that the ignoring function of ISTJ is physical action. The ignoring function of ENFP is uh, metaphysical knowledge. So, to the extent that we, they are ignoring what's going on between them, they're going to be ignoring the fact that um, ENFP keeps providing information about what the best course is, and ISCJ keeps taking action to make that happen. Like real follow through in action. So, but they're not going to see it as that necessarily. Like I, I just had this realization right now. That's always happening with me and Kim. I'm always giving her guidance about what the better course is, the best course is. And she's always seeking more of that from me and also providing the impetus to do shit a lot of times. So, but we don't 
we not we're not doing that consciously really it's just happening what we are consciously doing much more so is the front end where i'm going here's an idea ideationally safe place for you to play with your ideation too kim it's not me providing ideas for kim it's providing an an ecosystem that's supportive of her own ideation that thinks she's hilarious when she makes good jokes and stuff we've got the same sense of humor but it's not just humor it's it gives her a chance to I like to put this over there and then I actually make it happen um, that's her valuing her ideationally driven replacement for TE so that environment on the front end is going to be more aware for you guys ISTJ and ENFP on the back end you're going to be like ENFP will be providing those that singular course and ISTJ will be providing the, the follow through and do it um, but it will be mistaken usually for FITE. Uh, then let's look at the six slot function. So the counter value is six sevens. The counter valued ones are TI and FE, and then the polar ones are TI and FE. So the thing is, it's important for you to counter value your partner's polar because your partner will seem like a bumbling idiot in their polar. Uh, I, w I had an analogy I had a, this morning where it's as though one person is um, equipped with taste and smell but no sight okay and everybody else is equipped with taste smell and sight and the thing is or let's include include hearing too okay taste smell sight and hearing everyone's in it has all those but some people have no smell but nobody knows neither party knows like they don't, i'm not aware that you can't smell and you're not aware that you can't smell and so here's the thing we're talking most of the time we're fine for saying that looks pretty that sounds nice that tastes good occasionally we'll be saying things like Oh, that smells so nice. And you'll be saying it too. Oh my God, that smells so nice. But you can't smell anything. But because you're unaware of your inability to smell, you assume that those words mean something other than they do. You've learned to use them contextually. When you use them properly, they seem to work fine. The Sometimes you get some strange looks, like they'll put out a, a weird smelling soup that actually tastes good, but it kind of smells funky. And you go, hmm, that smells good. And and they go, you like the smell? And you go, yeah, I mean, it smells good, right? Yeah, it smells good. That's what, that's what happens when we look at something that looks good and the right sounds are in place and it tastes good. That means it smells good. That's an overall term that means all those other things. Well, that's what happens with your polar. So... I, I use all those kinds of FI language. I tell Kimberly, I love you. I tell Kimberly, I love you because I think that's how you love people is by affirming them and telling them you love them and making sure they they feel safe and, and making sure that they feel um, as though you're committed to them in the relationship and stuff like that. That's all FE stuff. When, and that's how I've always understood it until like literally today it occurs to me Oh, when you say I love you, those words actually mean I'm experiencing feelings of greed for you or love or that 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 rush of I I want to to just have you. I, I want to be in your company. That this there's this feeling that people refer to and I've experienced it and I mean, it's not a very healthy feeling, it doesn't seem to me. Really. It's kind of codependent and uh like isn't it? I, I, regardless, but it, I, because I viewed when like my mom or somebody said I love you as being positive and being nice to me, I thought that that was what it meant. That it's something you said to do that thing. That it was specifically a an fe an fe thing. I thought it was a, a version of a version of taste. I didn't know that smell was actually a thing. Uh, that doesn't the, the problem with this analogy is of course 
the smeller does actually smell things, but it, to make the analogy right, the smeller smells things all the time, but keeps, but never thinks it's significant enough to be what everybody's talking about. So it's like, well, people keep talking about things smelling good. They must not be talking about that little thing that happens with my nose. I mean, they can't be talking about that. That doesn't, that's not, any, nobody would bother even mentioning that thing. It, it's more like that. So that's why they call it a blind spot. But note that in my opinion, your blind spot, you're more likely to, to have flashes of it that are comprehensible to you then you are likely to understand your fifth or eighth slot functions. So I think fifth and eighth slot are less understandable than seventh, and most understandable of the unconscious functions is sixth. And that's what's going to be liberated for both parties in the ENFP-ISTJ relationship, is their sixth function. For ISTJ, they will be there to provide the logic, the consistency, the kind of argumentation or parsing binary not if this then not that kind of stuff that they typically don't feel particularly competent at that they'll get busted about a bit so if you're if you're a te tool user then people won't necessarily view you as competent about ti for example chris my next door neighbor is istj or cameron istj i don't view them as uh parsing parsing thinkers at all uh Chris uses reasons for justifications for things that are are not bad, but he's very subject to being frame-led, as is Kimberly, as are all SI DOMs. They're subject to being frame-led because their epistemology is subjective first, and so they don't ideationally escape that native... slowness on on shifting levels rhetorically they can do it I don't mean slowness like they're dumb I mean it they don't they don't move fast enough rhetorically because they're so locked into what they already have understood to be the way to go forward and it makes them vulnerable to people going Okay, but blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, they're arguing into that person's framework. No, I didn't, blah, 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 blah. That's never the answer. If you're getting accused of something um, and you don't you don't want to have it, like you didn't actually do something wrong or whatever, and you're getting scolded, the response is never, I didn't do that, or, uh, but, uh, but, 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 I only did it, blah, 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 blah. No. That's how you lose framework battles, right? You the response is, "Are you okay?" Because you seem to be thinking that. I mean, I don't know. I've never encountered this sort of weird entitlement that you would trans transgress upon my ontology in this fashion. Uh, are you feeling okay? This isn't normal behavior for you. Oh, what you don't like that? You don't want me turning it on you? That's how you do deal with that shit. Don't let them get away with it ever. Don't ever let anybody frame lead you. If I can shove it up their ass. Anyway, that's not the point of this video. So, uh, ISTJs can be really frame leadable, but they won't let ENFP get frame led. I bet you that's how it works. They're like, okay, I no, I don't use this normally because I don't value this kind of bullshit. This. Oh, I've, I'm trickier in the talking. I'm smarter in the conditionality. Therefore, I'm right or something, even though you're totally ineffective. I don't normally value that stupid TI shit, but I'm not going to watch, sit here and watch ENFP get frame led. So here it is. Here's my TI. And ENFP probably won't actually get frame led because with an FI tool function, they don't really care if you're right or not. They care about how what their feelings about it are. And... Uh, as a consequence, the, the problem, it, the problem with ISFJ in particular about getting frame led is they want to be fair. They've got TI in the third slot, and they want others to perceive them as fair, and 
they try to be responsive as a consequence. And bad people will use that against them. She's got her defenses on against that shit so built up at this point at 46 that she won't let me do any shit like that to her. She's an expert spotter of it. But be aware that it's what happens to SI doms in general. Whether they develop good defenses or, or haven't developed them yet, they're not easily, they're not deft or quick at spotting and, and preventing frame leading. And ENFP will make them much better at it. For sure. Because ENFP's TI, first of all, their polar TI is, is something where they just simply don't like to settle on definitive conclusions about anything. Because even if it's valid or logical, it's still there are other possibility of ways that an individual might feel about it that would make it different for them personally. And that's true. It is true that, you know, each person, each validity is it instantiates an individual agents for the purpose of their experience so on that level it's the case that it doesn't matter how valid you are because this other person might experience your validity as harmful or hurtful to them or not of value to them or something like that is true but missing the point in a lot of different ways but anyway that's not going to bother ISTJ they're going to see it as an opportunity to be better than somebody at TE finally. I mean, TI finally. That's how I see it with Kim. Finally, I'm better than somebody than at TE. And she appreciates it and respects it and says, good job when I do things, you know? Same thing with the TI. Okay. Then the other one that's polar there, the uh, FE, ISTJ is going to be socially awkward on some level. They may not be make a lot of social mistakes, but they're not going to be graceful. They're not going to be witty. They're not going to be, um, you know, playful bantery. Uh, to the extent that they are that way, it's because ENFP enables them to be that way. So ENFP provides the NE and that will sometimes express in ways that are more effy uh, impactful, if not necessarily effy clever or effy wise or something like that. Uh, the important thing is, though, ENFP is likely to find it adorable. I find Kimberly's polar TE adorable. I think she finds my polar FI a little bit more of a challenge because, you know, I, I remember I used to tell her, Kimberly. I love you so much. I must love you way more than you love me. And she'd say, no, that's not the case. And I always just thought, well, that's just, it doesn't, that's not a real thing anyway. It's just kind of like uh, a thing you say. And uh, that's proof right there that, <laughs> you know, mine's polar and hers is um, countervalued. So with the FE thing then, <laughs> ENF people feel like they've got excellent FE. And by the way, ENFP is the best FE of all the FI users, in my opinion. Of all FI users, ENFP has the best FE. The only one who gives them a run for their money, potentially, is ISFP. No, we're talking about FI users. You're an FE user. I'm an FE user. FE users, obviously, usually, like if you're an FE Dom or FE second slot, obviously you're going to have the strongest FE. But if you are not an FE in the conscious stack user, then the, of all the FI users, ENFP, I think, has the best FE. They're the most, at least maybe it's because I'm an NE, I see the NE and it makes it's comfortable for me. Uh, INFPs also have pretty good FE usually. So, uh,. And it's, I think it's important to ENFPs to have good enough FE to be socially active because they are extroverts and they are extroverted intuitors, which means they do actualize externally, which means they need to have a lot of social engagement. That will enable ICJ to get out and up in the mix and participate in social activities, get coverage from the ENFP's FE without having to pay consequences for it later when ENFP goes back home and says, like, if, if ISTJ were with ESFJ, like the neighbors there, 
Um, I'm sure every time Chris and Jen go out and they go back home, Chris probably gets a lecture about all the F.E. things he needs to do differently next time. I'm sure he does. I have seen Jen many times do... And never, don't mind him. Just, just ignore him. He's making a really weird, awkward joke. And nobody gets it. I understand that because I'm his wife. You know, so I... ESFJ and ISTJ seem to get along fine and it seems like a good relationship but I believe to be the case that she spends a lot of time um, she spends a lot of time um, policing his <laughs> yeah she spends a lot of time policing his FE and I believe that since I've come around that at least one of them has some conception of the fact that this relationship isn't actually meant to be even though they have a new baby together and they seem happy and everything. So we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening with them. But ESFJ, they take a long ass time to come to terms with the fact that this is not the right course because ESFJ's insecurity function is uh, TE. So it's and they've got polar and I. Polar and I is, is actually the real problem there. It's they are blind to the fact that there might be a single right course here and it might be oh, this doesn't work. This isn't ever gonna work. It's a bad idea. If you got polar and I, you don't really have those thoughts very often. And if you got insecure T E, then you wouldn't know how to pull the trigger on something <laughs> like you you wouldn't want to you really don't want to have to put it that way you don't want to have to figure out how to execute all the processes of this which necessarily a breakup or something like that is is process intensive so ENFP doesn't have that problem ENFP's function is coordinated with the ISTJ perfectly and their insecurity function is SE, extroverted sensing. ISTJ being an introverted sensor as ignoring extroverted sensing, which allows... Uh, Why is there a heater in here? <laughs> which allows them to... It's a little crisp. Which allows them to... Basically, ISTJ will do... What, they don't have to... They can ignore SE and it'll take care of itself. They'll do what's in front of them. And they'll do what they know from habit they do. They'll do what they know is good for their comfort level as a, and ergonomics. They'll do like Cameron does with his little mini cooler that he's got all set up with his little tools and his bong. He takes it with him everywhere. He doesn't like to smoke out of anybody else's pipes. Uh, no, I brought my own bong. And it's absolutely spotless every time. <laughs> He wipes it after everybody uses it. He wipes it off. He's got like alcohol swab or something. It's it's ISTJ textbook ISTJ agree. And when he come over here, I have to remember it is genuinely something he wants to do. He wants me to tell him what kind of shit around here is broken, so that he can fix it, and or, or we can fix it together. It. And I can sit there and go, oh, that's good, camera, you know. Uh, so my be my improving TE is kind of like bad for our friendship a little bit. But I will I will try to remember that. The problem was last time he came over, I wasn't feeling like doing anything. I was we didn't have any Adderall or anything, so I was sad. And I wasn't sad. I was post sad. It was right after coming my big fight. Anyway, ISCJ ENFP. I think you guys are a match made in heaven, and I think that that's going to be perfect because at the end of the day. ISTJ wants to genuinely love the other person, which doesn't mean FE kind of love, like I mean when I say it. It means to be to to have their greed for the other person fulfilled, um, and they want to do that to a party who wants to use the tool function, their greed fulfillment vectors. The thing about that is. Having an FI the tool function doesn't just mean you you say, I make decisions about things by by arbitrary liking. Well, I like the way 
that car looks a little bit better than this car, so I'm just going to buy that car instead. It doesn't work quite like that, right? It's it's not a judging function in that capacity. It's a judging function that works a lot more uh, across time in the sense that the ENFP or any, or the, who else uses FIT? Oh, ESFP. They're going to, well, not really ESFP. ENFP <laughs> uh, is going to understand the realities of feelings and the impacts of feelings across time way, 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 way better than ESFP. And um, that's because they've got NI ignoring, which is still strong and handles this business without any conscious attention. It's almost your most beneficial function. So that means you're going to get the fact that you don't want, like I was talking to Sauce earlier, and he was saying how he never really had a one night stand and didn't really want to, that the reason he was sleeping with somebody because he authentically cared about them and and they never he'd never have a notch on his belt, right? There's no there's no sleeping with somebody just to either go number three or get a notch on the belt. The, the former being S E reasons, the the latter being F E reasons. Um which is why ESTPs are going to naturally be offensive to ENFPs and ENTPs because they've got the two uh, the two functions in their dominant stack that cause you to have sex in ways that we find not cool. In other words, oh, I, I well, yeah, why did you have sex with that girl? Oh, I just wanted to get my rocks off. So you didn't even like her? I, I liked getting my rocks off. You know, we... I, any users find that any doms find that se se eight people like me and you know if he's find that brutal barbaric and and to be condemned and then equivalently well why'd you fuck her because bro that's number number four this week we find that disgusting but we're much more likely to do the latter one than the former because we have a F-E hidden agenda, we might be so fucking stupid and crazy as to think, oh, well, I better I better act more S-E because I want to have good F-E, even though I think F-C is awful. So the thing about that element is the N-I ignoring links to the SE insecure. You have strong but unconscious NI and that requires you to re reject and resist and find very uncomfortable the the final of those four equations. So you've got your two epistemologies, two actions, and that's your eighth law function if you're in in, in EDOM. So uh that's about it for the ISTJ ENFP relationship. I would suspect it would go best if the ENFP were a chick and the ISTJ were a dude. That would be more conventional with, be more consistent with conventional gender roles. If it's the other way around, um, well, it's gonna play out weird, I guess, but still fine. But uh, things, the roles just have to be reversed. You know, the ENFP is bringing the, the more emotional aspect and the ISTJ is being practical. It's not like emotional analytical. It's emotional practical. Well, I know you really want that, sweetie, and I totally validate that as a reason for doing things. But uh, we have practical considerations. How are we going to get that accomplished? Um, whereas with TI, FE users, that's, it's not going to be like, well, I get that you really want that, Kim, and that is truly, really important. It's going to be like, okay, Kim, you got to give me some good reasons besides that. Come on. It, that's that's not a reason for anything. That's just your feelings. And, in fact, we will have TEFI conflicts when... I want to do it in a way that I think is a smart way to do it. And she wants to do it in a way that's going to look nice for company. That's a T-E-F-E conflict. 
but it's also a TEFI conflict because her FI is saying, I just want it this way. I don't want to have to explain it to you. And I, I don't need it to be justified by anything except that's how I want it. That's it. That's FI, you know? And it's perfectly okay for people to say, I need to sometimes be able to just tell you, I want it because I want it that way and I don't want to explain myself. I don't want to justify myself all the time. FI doesn't feel like it justifying itself and it shouldn't have to justify itself. So that's uh, that happens with me and Kim where we have a TEFI thing. And then Kim will make fun of me and say, oh, right, I forgot we have an order of operations. Because it just like um, I kind of make fun of moisture, she makes fun of tea. It's our pullers. Anyhow, that's all I have to say about ENFP, ICJ. They're going to make fun of each other's pullers probably too. That means, you know, ENFP will poke a little fun at the bad FE and ICJ will poke a little fun at the bad TI. And or at least the un, the unwillingness to to let TI do its job. It's not so much they have bad TI; they just won't let it do its job because they keep collapsing back down to, yeah, but individual people might feel differently about that, and so it doesn't matter if it's valid or correct or anything anyway. Because if I don't feel it's correct, then it's not correct to me. You know, that'll happen a lot. So anyway, that's it. That's all I gotta say about that. And thank you. Don't forget to eat plain cheese. I gotta go get this bed from Colin's house. We're gonna um. We're going to jump from the roof and have a safe landing spot on the grass with the bed there. No, that's not what we're using it for. All right, goodbye.